the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Taurus 856. So starting with the good, the Taurus 856 series has six rounds of 38, and most guns of size only hold five rounds. So we're not just going to cover the Taurus 856 series, we're also going to cover some of the other small frame Taurus revolvers such as the Taurus 905 which holds five rounds of 9mm and the 605 which holds five rounds of 357 Magnum. Now most of these guns are going to fit in our Icon 2.0 holsters and my understanding is they will also work in a lot of other Taurus 856 holsters. So if you've got a 905, a 605, or an 856 you can use the same holster for all of them. Maintenance is another good thing about these revolvers. They're very easy to maintain. You just have to run a bore snake through the cylinders and then run a bore snake through the barrel. Brush down the ejector rod, get really good around the star, and then get it good where that forcing cone is. Just clean the gun up so that you're gonna get most of that carbon off of it. Apply a little lube and you're good to go. All right, let's go shoot these guns and see how they actually do on the range. So these guns carry pretty well and it also depends on the type of uh, roll you're using the gun in. If you're carrying with this with gym shorts, you obviously want to run it with the ultra lightweight versions, but those are, they suck to shoot. Uh, I personally prefer the steel frame guns and I tend to carry the 856 more in an everyday carry roll when I'm wearing jeans, a belt, normal clothing. So as you can see, this has got the full length grip. It concealed really well underneath my shirt and that's due to the wing on the Icon 2.0. Holster's really comfortable, guys. I'm biased, but it is the best holster I'm aware of on the market right now. So the trigger on these guns is actually pretty decent considering their price point. So you've got the typical double action, single action trigger setup. So right there, I shot the gun in single action. And if you are trying to get those accurate long distance shots, it does work, but it's gonna be much slower than running the gun in double action only. So another thing I really like about this is you just saw how easy those rounds ejected from this gun. This gun has not been cleaned in over 500 rounds. I've not run a bore snake through it or anything. And those rounds still eject great. Not my J-frames, my Rugers, none of my other revolvers eject as well as all my 856s have. So now that we've shot these guns a little bit, let's finish out the good and we're gonna transition to the bad. So good is the finish on some of these guns is absolutely excellent for their price point. So this Taurus 905 that I have here, the blued finish on this or the black finish they have is absolutely beautiful for a sub $400 gun. Now this is also where we get to the bad. The stainless steel finish they have on most of their guns and the black finish they have on the ultralight is not that great. Uh, they're very porous, they're gonna show any kind of dirt carbon or uh, scuff marks, you may get rubbing them on something like Kydex, where the Kydex actually gets into the finish. It'll come off with a little bit of uh, elbow grease and some gun lube, but it's something you do wanna take into consideration. But again, understand these are budget price point guns. So there are a lot of grip options for the Taurus 856, but there aren't a lot of great grip options. So pretty much every Taurus 856 I've seen ships with one of these compact grips. And these compact grips, uh, they fill the hand well for the size. They're very concealable. But the downside is they have a little bit of a tackiness to them that can be uncomfortable against your skin when you're carrying concealed. So you can wrap them in goon tape if you want to improve that aspect. The biggest downside of these grips is they transfer a lot of recoil to your hand. Now here I've got them on a super lightweight gun, one of their ultralight models. And this obviously has a lot of recoil, but you can fire around 150 rounds, or at least I can, through a gun with these grips if it's on one of their three inch steel models. It can be dumb, but it's not fun. Uh, normally a gun of that weight would be pretty fun to shoot at the range. With these grips, again, doable, but it's just not enjoyable. So the Hogue Mono Grips are another option. They allow you to get a full grip on the gun, but the back strap is exposed and it transfers a little more recoil into your hand than you'd hope to on a three inch full steel revolver. This is probably one of the better options out there, but I definitely suggest wrapping it in goon tape because it'll get rid of some of the texture and just give you a little more grip as well as covering a little bit of that back strap, giving you just a little bit more cushion when you're firing the gun. Another thing is if you're carrying a grip this long, you're definitely gonna need a good concealable holster. 
with some sort of claw. Our Icon 2.0 is perfect for that. So some of these guns ship from the factory with VZ grips. You can also buy these on Amazon or through Taurus the site as well as VZ. I do not like these grips. I've talked to a lot of other people and they've kind of come to the same consensus. They're great when you're dry firing. They seem like a pretty good grip, but when you're actually shooting them, they transfer a lot of recoil into your hand. It's not just the harder G10 material, it's the actual design and shape of these grips, especially back towards where the back strap is. I've got VZ grips on my J-frames. I absolutely love them, but for some reason on the Taurus 856, they just didn't do quite as good of a job. Another factory option is these Taurus. They look like they're G10 or some sort of composite grip. Uh, they're really small. These are absolutely worthless unless you have the tiniest hands known to man. I would not want to fire any one of these guns with these grips. It probably hurt like hell. So the last factory option that they have at this time is the Viridian laser grips. Now these are pretty much worthless in full light like what we have right now, but they work pretty well in low light. They've got good ergonomics. Uh, if you want to see a comparison between the Viridian and the Crimson Trace laser grips for the Taurus 856 series, let us know down below in the comments. That might be a video that we'll do. So now we're going to cover some of the aftermarket grips. Packmire makes a pretty good set of wood grips but the problem is the top portion of the grip is too narrow, so it really gets sharp on the edges with the uh, feel of your hand. And it doesn't feel that bad when you're dry firing, but when you're shooting the gun under recoil, you definitely get a little more, bit more movement up there than I would like. The bottom of the grip is really thick and fills out your hand, but it also makes the gun just a tad more difficult to conceal for most people. All right, Amazon wood grips. There are a lot of grip options for these guns on eBay and Amazon that are wood from, I believe Thailand's one of the main sources. But I got a pair of these, I paid I think almost 80 bucks for them. The fit is horrible, they'd rattle around in the gun. If you're gonna get these and maybe fit them to the gun yourself, uh, you might get a decent fit, but I really don't care for the finish. The recoil, the felt recoil that transferred to my hand with these things was absolutely atrocious. Definitely don't suggest buying random wooden grips off Amazon or eBay. So my favorite set of grips for the Taurus 856 are these Uncle Mike's combat grips. They offer a full grip, they cover the back strap, they do the best job I've found with reducing recoil. Uh, also fairly concealable, again with a good holster. But unfortunately these are no longer in production so you're gonna have to hunt them down on eBay, classifieds, forms, and they can get quite spendy. If Taurus would partner with Hogue and make the Tamer grips, for the 856 series, I think that would fix all my complaints and this category would go from bad into good because it would really help tame the recoil of these guns. Uh, the Smith & Wesson J-frames, in my opinion, have slightly less recoil at less weight than the Taurus 856 series and I attribute that to the actual design of the grips. So the Taurus comes right now in two drastically different sight setups. Most of the guns are gonna come with a pinned front sight some of the older production guns have a milled in front sight, which it works, but the only thing you can really do to improve that is uh, put a little paint on the front sight or some nail polish. The newest option is the 856 Toro, which has a red dot mounted up here. And we'll cover this more a little bit later, but there are some real upsides to this, as well as some major downsides. The pin front sights on these guns are really good and somewhat unique for revolvers, mostly because Taurus actually offers their front sights and multiple different blade heights. So that means you can regulate the gun to your chosen carry ammo in most situations. I'm not sure if all the front sight heights work with all the different ammo out there, but you've got more options you do with pretty much any other revolver out there. That's definitely gonna be something that's more in the good category than the bad. The bad is I really don't like the rear shape of their sight. I find it pretty easy to lose the front sight when you're shooting really fast. Think that's part of the narrow rear sight with a square notch. I really wish this had a little bit of a wider U-notch style sight. If you're trying to shoot really fast, this gun will limit you. I was out at the range a couple of weeks ago and I was doing a lot of stuff with the shot timer and I found that due to the sights, I could not shoot this gun and have accountable hits at seven yards much faster than 0.35 split times. And I did the same thing with the Toro, which we're about to do here for you guys in a second. And the Toro shave times by 20 to 25% just because the sight's better. I always thought the limitations on these revolvers was my trigger control, but it's really how fast I can see these sights. 
So Taurus is the first manufacturer that has released a revolver from the factory with a mounted red dot option. And it's really fun to shoot, but I have my reservations when it comes to concealed carry. If you put this gun on in a holster, it's not as easy to conceal because you have to keep this dot above your belt line. And to do that, you either push the gun really high up, so it has a very high ride height, as you can see right here, and that's gonna force most of the weight of the ammo and the frame above your belt line, causing the gun to wanna to tip forward, pushing the barrel into your groin, and it's not gonna conceal well, or it's go, you're going to have to cant the holster and do almost like a cross draw type movement and carry the holster very center line. It works okay that way, but this gun doesn't conceal nearly as well as a traditional revolver like what I'm wearing right now. So let's get the shot timer. I've got two targets down here. We're gonna take one of these targets and shoot it with a Toro for time. We're gonna do the same thing with the standard 856 sights. So I got my shot timer out. We got the iron sighted gun. Seven yard A zone is the goal. Not going for fast here, but going for consistent known hits. All right, I shot those to the left. Let's see, my split times on all those are right around 0.4 seconds. So let's see what we can do with the Toro gun now. That screwed up, didn't it? So the timer just screwed up with the gun and I didn't get the full time the first time I shot the Toro. So we're gonna redo that in the lower part of the A zone, show you guys how the hits are. All right, those hits right there are right under 0.35. They're running about 0.33 to 0.35 seconds as far as the split times. Now let's go and take a look at the targets. So right here we have the target and this is the first group I shot with the Toro. And I think the split times were actually a little bit better because I had a little bit of a lower grip and I was able to time the recoil a little bit better. This is the second group with the split times that were a little bit faster than shooting the iron sight right here. And you can see I was shooting to the left like I told you guys about earlier. So the iron sights are not nearly as easy to use as the red dot. So other major downsides of running a dot on this gun is currently there aren't a lot of dots on the market that can be adjusted to sufficient point of aim, point of impact for a lot of common ammo out there. This primary arms is one of the few optics that does. I know the hollow suns are having issues with it. Uh, another issue is there's no backup iron sights. So if your sights go down, you know, you can't see this front sight at all through the window. There's no rear sight. And if you could, you'd be aiming up at the sky. So you're gonna be point shooting this gun if for whatever reason the dot does fail. So speed loaders, there's not a lot of speed loader options for these guns. If you're looking for a spring assisted speed loader, I haven't found one that will work. I've heard people say that the Safari Land Comp 2s and 3s will work with these guns. Neither of those work for me. The jet loader didn't work. Uh, the Speed Bees, I know Speed Bees does make a speed loader which will work, but I don't trust the reliability of those speed loaders. Your best bet is going to be either HKS or Five Star. The HKS hold the rounds a lot tighter, but I don't like the direction which you have to turn the knob. I find the five star speed loader to be a little more natural for me. So I'll deal with the uh, rounds being a little bit looser. Now the recoil on these guns is again gonna depend on the grips you're using as well as the weight of the gun. So right here, we've got one of the ultralight models and I'm gonna shoot this right here. You guys can see the recoil on these. Honestly, with these 132 grain bullets, not that bad. You put 158 grain in these, it becomes painful to shoot. Here, this is the three inch steel model. And obviously a lot less recoil than the ultralight model. Really comes down to personal preference, guys. But I find the steel to be a little bit more forgiving for most shooters. All right, guys, so now we get to the ugly part. So I wish the story was different than this, but I've purchased four of these Taurus revolvers with my own money, and then Taurus has sent me one 856 Toro for holster development. 
three out of the four revolvers I've purchased, or two of them have had to go back to factory and be replaced, and another one might. So the first one was an 856 Tallow edition that the firing pin broke after a thousand rounds of dry fire and 120 rounds-ish of live fire. It broke after my first rain session with it. It broke while I was dry firing it the next day. Uh, the, they said it had frame damage, so they would have to completely replace the gun and they could not fix it. They did not have any of those tallow additions in stock at that time, so they offered me an exchange for a gun of equal or lesser value to MSRP. I ended up getting this Taurus 856 Defender, which has been 100%. I have close to, I'd say now around 700 rounds of ammo through it. I actually carry this gun from time to time. I do trust it. I've dry fired it probably in excess of 5,000 times without snap caps. Some of that with snap caps though, I was really religious about using snap caps and went to a Clint Smith class and he said that these revolvers shouldn't need them. So who am I not to trust Clint Smith? But this Taurus 905 that I just picked up in the last week, you can see that the ejector sometimes sticks and that's an issue. I mean, that gun should not leave the factory without happening. I talked with one of the Taurus reps. They said I should probably, they, this was not an official customer service rep, but somebody else at Taurus, they said I should probably be able to fix this on my own, which I'm gonna attempt to do. But if I can't, it's gonna end up going back to the factory to get fixed or maybe potentially replaced. I also have a Taurus 605 uh, that never shot 357 Magnum. It only shot 38s, 158 grain standard pressure and 132 grain standard pressure. That gun, it started shooting pieces of the jacket out the side of the gun because it was out of time. So I have a lot of concerns about these guns and the quality control. Now that said, Taurus is not the only company that has this issue. My gun shop talking to them, they actually have not had to send any other Taurus revolvers back besides mine. Granted, I'm probably the only one who shoots them a lot. They've had to send multiple Smith & Wessons back. And Ruger is actually the worst of any brand for sending guns back, but they haven't had to send any Ruger LCRs back. So when you're buying a revolver, I think the biggest takeaway is that you should probably buy a Davidson's gun. Davidson's has a distributor warranty to where you'll have to pay return shipping, but if you have a problem like I have with some of these guns, they'll just replace it. So whether you're buying a Taurus, a Smith & Wesson, or a Ruger, I would make sure that it's a Davidson's gun. Talk to your local gun dealer about that. The Taurus 856 has a lot going for it, but there's also some major downsides as we covered. If Hogue would come out with tamer grips for this gun, it would take care of the recoil issue. If Taurus would widen up that front, that rear sight, and make the sight picture a lot better, they already offer interchangeable front sight blades, which make dialing in for certain carry ammo much easier. Quality control is probably the biggest thing they need to fix. Really hope they figure that out, but we'll see. Hope you guys have gained something from this review, and remember guys, take charge and carry with confidence. <laughs>